Your first name is Adam? Okay, and um, another Adam. <laughs> okay, what's your last name? Spell it, please. Wait, they were saying a lot of stuff about Are you the technical person? B A R R L. About what? About ads? Were there ads? So I did the radio. Oh, the. Rural code. Oh, the rural code. Okay, cool. Are you going to be able to answer our questions about that? Oh, um, and then for the Skype, um, they couldn't hear unless I put the mic there. Mm -hmm. Do we have another lapel uh, to put there? Yeah, whatever. Mm. We're on uh, the recording. So, uh, okay, well, <coughs> let's, uh, let's just start. start. Let's we'll keep doing that for the cameras as we go. Okay, hold on, hold on one second. Okay, yeah, listen, I need you to clip it right here. Mm -hmm. and, and I need you to, to lo raise the level so that you can hear that when it speaks. Okay? It sounds very good. Okay, hang on there. Yeah, that everybody loved it when I did that. Yeah, okay. that's cool. But they can't hear you because they're not going to hear you. Is is there another lapel we could use? You can't is it hold it like this? You got to put it right so here. It's not plugged in. Ah, crap. It's not plugged in. Another lapel. No, don't worry about that. We'll fix that later. Um. So when I speak, I'll just clip it in very fast. Yeah, this cord. It doesn't. You don't have to clip it in. I think you're doing fine by going like this. Yeah, because you gotta hold it close enough. You don't have to clip yeah. it. Just okay. go like that. Okay. And like this. Okay. Ed, just leave it on that shot and leave the cameras on, please. Okay. All right, Adam. Can you hear me? Hi. Hey. Hi. Okay. And actually, we're not gonna use Skype, so we can probably just hear this. Okay. Oh wait, yeah, we are, aren't we? <laughs> Jared, are you still? <laughs> I forgot. Hang on one second. Are you still there, Jared? Wait a minute, turn it back on. Hold on. Okay, there. Jared, are you there? Yeah, you're still yeah, there. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay, cool. So, uh, all right, are we ready? Ed, is the camera on? Okay, check that it's broadcasting and recording. Is it broadcasting and recording? Ed? Yes. Okay, here we go. All right, in five, four, Okay, welcome back to the Bitcoin Show. This is what, episode, what are we in now? Uh, five? Four point five. Four point five, something like that. Um, <clears throat> we are back, and uh, we have with us on the line from Tokyo, um, Adam, I need the lower third, Ed. Back to the lower third, sorry. Hang on one second. Back on the shot I wanted. There we go, Adam Barr, B-A-R-R, -R, from Mount Gox. And uh, also with us is Jared Kenna, uh, via Skype from Trade Hill. So Adam Barr is with Mt. Gox, and uh, again, Jared Kenna is with Trade Hill. So uh, Adam, you're in Tokyo, right? Yeah, yeah, Tokyo, and we're kind of just waiting to see the, uh, the mesh today. You're, you're doing what to the mesh? We're, we're, we're waking up to the mess. Oh, waking up to the mess. Oh my gosh, so this happened overnight while you guys were sleeping? Yeah, they, they, they can't hear us. Wow, you can't, hold on, you can't hear? Can't hear anything, okay. Um, well, maybe you have to speak up really loud. I'm gonna hold it as well. Is that the speakerphone? Is, is my mic on? My mic's on, okay, pull my levels up high. Okay, all right, Adam, so. It sounds like your mic is off. No, Somebody's is my off. mic on, Ed? You can hear me, okay, go ahead, Adam, say something. Hello. Can you hear Adam? Ed? You can't hear Adam, that's weird. Uh, I don't know why. All right. So, uh, Adam, you're, you said you're the email guy? Yeah, I'm just, uh, I'm just working by store, uh, pretty small team here, team of two, and uh, I handle the email, and I, I guess the customer face thing. Uh, I started things for now. Oh, uh, okay. So, um, the, uh, I understand, you know, Mark is uh, not a native English speaker, so he'd prefer for you to uh, field the, the questions. How, uh, like, are you in, are you responsible for any of the technical stuff, or are you, uh, uh, or, or just like kind of uh, customer service type of email stuff? 
mostly that. I mean, I've got some opportunities, but I don't, I don't work directly with the database or the, or the website developers. So, mm -hmm. the questions will be kind of canned, to be honest with you. Oh, okay. Um, you know, obviously there are... Repeat. Repeat, okay. The can, the questions will be kind of canned because you mostly deal with customer service, is that what you're saying? Yeah, exactly. Like, I know okay. what I, you know, I can, can you hear? They can't hear anything. But, um, you know, the technical details, I don't even know if we're 100% clear on yet. We're still investigating everything. So. Okay. I'll tell you what, are you, are you able to get on Skype? Do you have that ability right there? Uh, good question. Um, they're saying that they can only hear through my mic. The, the, can the you hear me, Ed? Is my mic on? My mic is on? They're saying that they can't hear me. That my, the guy on the left, that's you. Hold on. The on the left. Oh, it's because gotta, mine is much, it much more louder. Oh. My okay. mic is more sensitive. Clip it on right here in the collar. There we go. I'm sorry. Okay, yeah, do you have access to Skype? I will need to download it. Oh, okay. <laughs> I love it. You're saying I love this show. Volume problems. Okay. So I'm Bruce, and this is Manny. Which one can't you hear? Swap mics. I can hear Bruce. Yeah. All right, guys. Echoes from the right guy's voice. Wait a minute. Dude on the left, hold your mic up to the phone. That's, are you talking about me? No. Okay. Wait. Yeah, I'm on the left. Yeah. Manny, who's my this? Okay. Hey, let's switch mics because they're saying mine is much more sensitive. Okay. Yeah, yeah, you probably have the levels uh, set differently over there. The slider. Yeah, hold on. <laughs> it's just technical difficulties. Okay. I think you'll be How about this? Can you hear me better now? Is that better? Good, better. Okay. Yeah, Ed, you got the levels set differently over there. All right, we're learning. It's a learning experience. We got all new equipment this week. So, all right, I'm gonna go like this. All right, now, how about now, Adam? Can you say something? Yeah. Okay. Here. Okay, in the chat room, can you hear now? Can you hear Adam? Say something, Adam. It's Way better, we can hear him. Way better, it's not Ed's fault. <laughs> Don't blame Ed. All right, cool, you can say, okay. So let's start over a little bit because um, <clears throat> uh, people are wondering what's going on. There's a million questions afoot, and I know it's morning there in Tokyo, but um, obviously this is uh, serious and important to people because we're talking about a lot of money. So, um, and I know that uh, Mark is not a native English speaker, so he'd prefer to, uh, to have you speak because you are. And um, so... He is at arm length. He is at arm length. Just so you guys know, like... Oh, he's right there. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, if you've got any hard questions, I can always divert to him. So. Okay, cool. So, what's the deal? Is this a, a simple matter of um, brute force attack on the um, uh, passwords of some of the users' accounts? Uh, not as far as we can tell. So, what, what it looks like is uh, we've got someone that performs audits on our system, mm -hmm. um, and it, they've got read access on, uh, read only access to the database. It mm -hmm. looks like someone compromised their personal computer and uh, was able to pull the database through that. So, it doesn't look like uh, I know a lot of people have been speculating that, oh, it's a SQL injection or, you know, it's been brute force or there's some other vulnerability mm -hmm. uh, that Mt. Gox had that's been. Um, Guess attacked, um, but that's not the case. It doesn't mm -hmm. look like uh, we've we haven't been able to find anything anyway thus far. And uh, it looks like the person that uh, that we talked about that had the read-only access is other so some stuff going on in their system that uh, led them to believe that's what that's what happened. They're asking in the chat room why why would you allow your database to be accessed off-site? Why would we allow it to be accessed off-site? Right, like, um, is that, you're talking about no, at the hosting? Actually, yeah. We actually don't have, like, our servers aren't with us here. They're, I think, currently in the in the state, so technically I think everything's off-site. Okay. Um, so what they wanted to know was why an auditor had access to anything but the site's code, like the user database. Why would the auditor have anything, have access to anything uh, except the site's code? Code like the user database. Sorry, you guys are muffled there. So oh, sorry. Uh, 
Okay, so they're asking why would the, uh, an auditor, a site auditor, have access to anything besides the code? Why would they have access to the actual user database? Let me, uh, let me just check that question for you. Two okay. seconds, please. They're saying it's the equivalent of a bank giving an auditor all the credit card numbers or something. Yeah. Okay. Raise his level, Ed. Raise it. Raise his level on the slider. Mm-hmm. For is for uh, financial audits, not uh, not the security audit. Oh, financial audits, not security audits. That's why. Okay. Okay. S yeah. Okay. So that's it's a financial audit you're referring to. Why does he need live data for that? They're asking. Why? Sorry. Why do we need? What? Why? Why would he need live data? Uh, well, for, I guess for a financial uh, audit, he would need live data, wouldn't he? Okay. Yeah, I, I don't know to be honest. But okay. How many bitcoins were stolen, or how many dollars were the bitcoins? How does it compare with a normal Saturday? So we know we know there is one account with. How many bitcoins were in the? Uh, I'm sorry. Can you say it again? Um, we don't we don't have an exact count, but we know um, there was one account that was uh, compromised and. Yeah, that was sold off. As far as how much money uh, has been lost, I think it's to the tune of about $1,000 that was withdrawn. <laughs> but because we're going to be reverting back with the trade, um, hopefully we're going to be trying to track down these Bitcoins. So it's hard to say right now. I don't think we have an exact number. Okay. And then... But we know for actual dollars, it's going to be whatever was withdrawn from that account. About $1,000 a day because of that limit. And, and what about... Um, what was I going to say... Uh, Oh, people, obviously, you're going you're gonna to roll back the transactions. We know that. Um, yep. What about somebody who made transactions and then they withdrew $1,000 worth in the meantime? Are you, what's going to happen there if they've already withdrawn the money that they, that they had in there? Yeah, I don't know if we've mm, hit, uh, hit that on the head yet, like what, what exactly we're going to do. Um, mm, Definitely, like, what we will be doing is, uh, as we figure these kind of hard questions out, is update the website or communicate to the user base. So mm -hmm. I think I've got an answer for you right now. But Okay. Um, at what price point uh, were those uh, Bitcoins stolen at? Oh, at what price point were the Bitcoins stolen at? What does that they mean? Were, they, they were asking, like, I don't know what they mean by that. I don't know. Maybe it was... Uh, they, they were just Bitcoins. Oh, you mean, like... At, if they withdrew a thousand dollars worth of bitcoins, at what price point? <laughs> a penny of bitcoin? <laughs> that would be a thousand bitcoins. So uh, when you withdraw from uh, Dox, it's um, a dollar USD limit. Yeah, it's a you U.S. dollar value. Bitcoin? Yeah, oh, okay. yeah, it's the U.S. dollar value. So, like, if they withdrew, I mean, I don't, you may not know that yet, but if somebody withdrew bitcoins, a thousand dollars worth of bitcoins, was it a thousand dollars worth of bitcoins at a penny a piece, or at ten cents a piece, or at twenty dollars a piece? You know what I mean? Oh. Okay, gotcha, gotcha. Yeah, the, the daily limit's, uh, uh, you know, 1,000 USD, so good question on how much was it was actually worth in Bitcoin. We right. have a few It's about uh, just getting from Mark here, maybe one one to two hundred bitcoins. So it wasn't at the um, one or two hundred. Okay. Yeah, it wasn't at like one cent. Right. <laughs> okay. Well, that's good. And I I read that in and I think it was a statement there that most of the bitcoins that you have are are stored off site. Yeah, they're not uh, housed and they're kind of shuffled around. We've got some different security measures that we use, so mm -hmm. make sure that they, they aren't. Compromised. Um, so, did the compromise arise out of the financial audit? Did the compromise arise out of the fan financial audit? Is that what you're saying? That during this financial audit, someone uh, got uh, uh, access to that computer. I mean, it wasn't during the, the audit. Um, it was just that that person does have access to, uh, yeah, to the database to to perform the audit, so whoever, I'm not sure how they knew this, but they, they essentially compromised the computer and then were able to compromise the website, or the, the database, sorry. Well, as I'm, I mean, speaking for the customers of Mt. Gox, um, 
what kind of people are doing your financial audit that would not secure that database better? I mean, who, are these people trustworthy? That Obviously not. Or something, that if they let it into somebody's hands who are uh, going to hack into the database and, and misuse it, how are, how are you finding people to do this financial audit for you? Um, let, me, let me just ask. Mm -hmm. Uh, Jared, I yeah. just want to say, our programmers are available later. Okay. If uh, you want to get him on the oh. phone, he can answer one yep. of his technical questions uh, okay. better than Adam or I could. Okay. Yeah. I'm sorry, Adam. <laughs> okay. That was Jared. But what were you saying, Adam? Yeah, sorry. Um, you know, as far as security, we, you know, with the uh, the people doing the audits, um, which was only one, uh, we do have a contract with them, um, non-disclosure. So, I mean, mm -hmm. we... we, we we did all the right paperwork to make sure things were, were correct and you know they there's all, I guess only so much you can do in, in hindsight um, so you know yeah. going, going forward we're going we're gonna to have to reevaluate uh, everything as far as who's going to be able to access this kind of stuff yeah for sure obviously it's, it's hard to know who you can trust when I mean everybody has that issue you never know who you can trust until you can't and that's how you find out. <laughs> yeah, we're not, we're not, I don't think we're saying that this person isn't trustworthy, just that they may not have taken the proper steps towards securing their, their computer, their system. Um, yeah. How, right. how, would, uh, how would their computer being compromised compromise the database? Um, was the database just available on the server for anyone who had local access to access it in the first place? Or why and why was it stored in plain text? Um, how was it stored? Can you hear that? And, uh, uh, a little bit, yeah, yeah. Let me let loud. me just uh, ping right. that off, Mark. Here, two seconds. Okay. Um, do we know how it was compromised? Like how? It was. Here's a good question: Was will the auditors be responsible for the losses? Yeah. Unfortunately, yeah, we don't we don't know how how it was compromised yet. Um, mm -hmm. So we're still, you know, we're still investigating on that side what what went wrong, and then obviously we've got our hands busy with uh, trying to just mitigate kind of the activity that's going on afterwards with phishing and and uh, yeah, re getting a security system in place. So we don't have an answer for that yet, but we're gonna find out. Right. Here's a couple more more good questions from our chat room. Uh, someone says, "Are the uh, is the auditing firm going to be responsible for the losses?" And another one uh, throw you at uh, throw out to you is. Uh, they, they say Mt. Gox should be providing them only with a scrub database that has the user's identity separate from the financial records. Oh, I see. Um, yeah, whether or not they'll be held responsible, I guess we need to find out exactly how much they need to be responsible for, if that's even in, you know, at play. So, um, again, yeah, I don't have a good answer for you, but once we know what we're looking at, right now it's $1,000, so, you know, that, mm -hmm. that doesn't sound like too big a pill to swallow. Um, as for the, the separate databases, um, I will definitely talk to Mark about that. I know we're, we're kind of reevaluating everything right now, so mm -hmm. those kind of suggestions are definitely, uh, we'll put on the table. Right, I mean, let me say this, people in the chat room, um, say your question only once. If you repeat your questions over and over with copy and paste, um, you're just gonna be banned from the chat room. So, uh, because that's not helping anybody, say your question once and we'll be able to read them, otherwise you're gonna be banned from the chat room. So um, they're asking about um, why would auditors have access to passwords, even hashed passwords? That should never be disclosed is what the comments are. What do you say about that? They, as far as I know, they just had read-only access to the, to the database. I'm not sure the particulars. And yeah, I mean, the question is, I guess, why would financial auditors need any kind of access to passwords, even hashed passwords? Yeah, no, I understand the question. Um, unfortunately, I can't bring it off Mark right now. He's on the phone. Uh -huh. um, maybe, you know, what we can do is I'll take that offline with Mark when he's got a, a few, and then I can, okay. you know, we are trying to communicate on the website, so yeah. we'll get back with that. Okay. And people are asking also when, um, uh, yes, we're, we are banning, banning the spammers from the chat room as quickly as we can. We're kind of short-staffed because it's a, it's a Sunday night, 
in New York, and uh, so we're kind of running on a shoestring here. We weren't planning to broadcast today. Um, there's a, another question that was about um, when will we get our money back? When the people, uh, do you have any idea, an ETA, on when the system will be back up and uh, rolled back and secured? Yeah, good question. So I just updated the the site saying that we're uh, we're going to be migrating everyone to SHA five twelve uh, multi iterated bolted hashing. So what that means is just a better uh, better hashing system, uh, kind of just to put to bed any fears that people might be having. And then also um, when the systems back up, we don't know exactly. We've put it out for six hours from half an hour, so five and a half hours. Um, we're going to have a system in place where um, you will go to Mt. Gox. It'll ask you to, I guess, re-authenticate your account. So how it'll do that is it'll look at the last IP that that came to your account. You'll need to. Um, that'll be need, That'll need to be the one that you've accessed the account from before. Mm -hmm. um, also, you'll need to verify your email address, um, your username, and your old password. You'll then be asked to update your account to a strong password. Mm -hmm. um, once the system's up, we're also hoping to do a withdraw password as an extra kind of safety catch um, to stop any, any kind of big withdrawals just, just in case something slips through our fingers. Okay. Uh, um, you can hear Adam well okay, Ed? Can you? Okay. Um, the yeah, I mean, somebody's asking. Uh, okay, financial audit. Well, two things. What what kind of a financial audit are we talking about? Is it a government audit or a private audit? And also, are you are there plans to have a security audit, uh, a, a third party or even a fourth party security audit on the entire system? Yeah, I think we're definitely looking at getting people to do security audits. Um, <laughs> goes without saying. Yeah. Um, as far as the financial audit, I'm not sure what the nature of that was. Mark, just two seconds here. A complete question. What is it? What 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 about dynamic IP? Uh, so you were saying about authentication through static IPs, I believe, and um, oh. they're asking what about users with dynamic IPs? Oh oh where oh. Where every time they disconnect from the internet, they connect <coughs> again, and then they would have I a got it. IP. Okay. Okay, I see. Uh, now I see your question. Now I'll ask him that when he comes back here. Didn't register me on Mt. Gox. Reset my password. Ooh. Yeah, someone didn't register an email with Mt. Gox. Can they reset their password? And then there is uh, 432,000 Bitcoin transactions. Okay. Yeah. Sorry, guys. Yeah. Okay, so yeah, I just spoke with Mark. The uh, so yeah, as far as the auditor, they were auditing us to make sure that we weren't kind of we weren't leveraging our position. I'm not sure how to put that. Um, that we weren't you know messing with the numbers and uh, and doing anything illegal on our end. Mm -hmm. Now we I just spoke with Mark and he was saying that it sounds like yeah we're we're probably going to be following up with uh, with lawyers uh, with this uh, probably. Probably suing them. So, um, yeah, they are going to be held accountable for the, the breach in security. Lots of people are asking about this 430,000 some Bitcoin transfer um, <clears throat> from Block Explorer that uh, a lot of people are wondering if it was from Mt. Gox or saying that it is it was from Mt. Gox. Do you know anything about that? The 400, what was the number? 400. 430,000, 432,000 Bitcoin transfer. Um, just two seconds. Okay. That's the amazing thing, isn't it? Amazing about Bitcoin that you can see someone's transfer. I mean, imagine if I could just see when Chase transferred money to TD, you know, <laughs> right before they went under or something. It's yeah. like, it's just, that's such a weird phenomenon with Bitcoin, isn't it? And then we can yeah. also ask them if the passwords were salted, which um, I know what salted is now. Okay. <laughs> we're ready to yes. answer here, yeah. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, so... So it sounds like um, as kind of just a security measure, we, we moved all of the Bitcoins, like our, I guess you could say our wallet from mm -hmm. the MT Gox uh, over to an on-site backup. So that was us just, I guess, moving everything so it okay. isn't compromised later on. So it's moving it offline, you mean, right? So that it's uh, exactly. to secure it. Okay. That's, probably, that's what I had read, you know, people speculating in it. 
made a lot of sense. I mean, you don't want to have everything on on site. Um, a lot of people want to ask about dynamic IPs, um, as it's normal in Europe um, and even the United States and a lot of areas. Um, what's going to be done for authentication for people with dynamic IPs that don't yeah. have the luxury of a static IP? Yeah, did you hear that? Speak up really loud because we can't hear too well. So he's saying that you're, you're talking about static IPs for security. What about people with dynamic IPs, which is like most people? Oh, sorry, you mean when they go to re-authenticate their account? Yes. Right, right. I see. Okay, understood. Um, yeah, generally, um, just because it happened recently, I guess it would depend on when the last time they logged into their account was. Mm -hmm. um, I know generally, I'm not sure about in the States, but uh, I know in Canada the ISPs uh, usually wait two weeks, more maybe, uh, mm -hmm. before, before you rush, uh, refresh your or get a new IP address. So um, I guess... Often a month or two. Yeah, maybe. Um, so yeah, it really depends on how many we're seeing, uh, how many people we're seeing with that issue, and maybe we'll have to you know, cook up something else to uh, to make sure that they can access their account. Um, yeah, and, and people are saying, <laughs> Mark says yeah, we will. exactly. A lot of people are saying in the chat room that they 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 register their account with no email address on file. How can we? How can that be? They be authenticated? Like, I guess it's the IP address, right? If it's the, either the IP address or their email, what if they don't have either one? Yeah, if they don't have either one, um, it's going to be more manual for sure. Um, what they'll probably end up needing to do is uh, getting back to us with a general kind of transaction history yeah. to that effect. I um, wish there was a better way. I don't think that there is, but if we think of one, we'll, <laughs> we'll take it. We, mm -hmm. we don't. Uh, our resources are so, as everyone knows, uh, they've been bogged down lately. So we. Right. Wanted to, <laughs> we want to make this as automated as possible. Of course, yeah. So can you hear me? Can you guys hear me? Somebody's saying my mic is low again. Can you guys hear me? Ed, can you hear me? Okay, good. So Jared, do you have any questions? You're hanging in there. Jared uh, Kenna yeah, is yeah. here from uh, Trade Hill as well. He's on with us. And uh, so talk to us. What, what, are, what are your thoughts and comments, questions do you have? Mm -hmm. Okay. And actually, he'd probably it'd probably be a lot more inter interesting conversation to have him talk with uh, Adam than me, anyways. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna have him call in right now if that works. Okay, sure. Are oh, you gonna have him call right. in? Okay. All right, cool. And then they wanted to know um, for Mount Gox, uh, were the passwords salted before they were hacked? Okay, Adam. Question: Were the passwords salted before they were uh, hashed? Question. Two seconds. Were the passwords salted before they were hacked? Were the passwords salted before they were hacked? Okay. Um, yeah, so um, again, we, we updated on the website. Um, the passwords were salted before they were hashed, but only for, mm -hmm. like, we implemented. Um, uh, Free BSD MD5 salted hashing two months ago, mm -hmm. and how how we migrated uh, users over to that was um, after they logged in, uh, they'd be migrated over. So the I think there were 1,600 uh, user accounts that were unsalted, and yeah, essentially those are just people that hadn't logged in uh, in the last two months. They're okay. essentially uh, idle accounts. Okay. And so every, every active user has got a. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay. All right. We've, I'm sorry. We got. Uh, who do we have now? Hello. Hello, it's Mike from Trade Hill. Hey, Mike. How you doing? Um, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. We are. Um, what's your last name, Mike? Mike Drabowski. Mike Drabowski. Okay. From Trade Hill is on with us. Do you have a you have a camera over there? Uh, no, no. Okay, right. let's look at a little teeny tiny thumbnail of you then. <laughs> so um, yeah, we're on the on the um, on the air here with um, Adam Barr from Mount Gox and uh, Jared. But you're the programmer guy from Trade Hill, right? The technical guy. Uh, yeah, I'm the 
Yeah, I'm one of the programmers. Uh, basically, I lead the, uh, the programming team here at Trey Hill. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay, sounds good. So, um, so what's, what's your take on this? Did you have any questions uh, specifically for Adam at uh, Mount Gox or concerns, answers? Uh, no, so, so obviously, you know, I'm not aware of the specifics of, of their situation. Um, certainly we're, we're concerned about it. We're concerned for them. We're concerned for ourselves. Um, it's not something that we like to see. Mm -hmm. um, but, you know, I, I, I trust that they have it under control. Okay, hold on. Who is Mike? Oh, do you have, um, what are you talking about? Do you have, uh, sorry about that. Do you have speakers on, what are you talking about, speakers? Oh, do you have, uh, you don't have a Ustream d running, do you? Uh, or to put, but you have to put your speakers, move your speakers away from your mic. And they can't hear you unless you put the mic down. Yeah. There's something wrong with this one. Okay, are your speakers moved away from your mic? Okay, can you repeat that last thing that you said? Uh, yeah, can you guys hear me okay now? Yeah. But yeah, I was saying uh, I don't I don't have any specific questions for for the MT Gox guys. Uh, you know, I think I'm concerned about what happened. I'm concerned for us as well. I think this is going to be an issue moving forward. Security is obviously going to be a big issue moving forward. Mm -hmm. uh, but I trust uh, that Adam and Mark have have the situation under control and they'll get it solved. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, they wanted to know uh, was the salt uh, compromised along with the database. Uh, for Mount Gox? You have to speak up really loud. I don't think yeah. you can hear me. Is, where's oh. your mic? It's over here, but okay. <laughs> yeah. apparently it's not working. So okay. Well. You want to speak into this mic then? Oh, okay. Um, they want to know uh, for Mount Gox um, if, if the salt was compromised um, along with the database. Uh, some users are speculating that indeed was uh, compromised as well. Okay, that's a question for Mount Gox? Who's that question for? Uh, for Mount Gox. Oh, okay. I'm sorry, Adam. Did you hear that? Along with the database being compromised, was the salt compromised as well? Did you hear that? Along with the database being compromised, was the salt compromised as well? I don't believe so. Let me just double check, Bill. Okay. certificates to each user, uh, and then how does the user authenticate uh, using certificates? So yeah, certificates? Mark's just saying like they cannot, they can't use rainbow tables, um, and I mean the, the salting can be uh, broken eventually, but we we hope to have everything up and running and everyone migrated over to the new uh, SHA 512 um, uh, hashing mm -hmm. uh, before before that were to happen, so. SHA 512, what, and what is that, a lot more secure, or, or what's? Yeah, it's definitely more secure, uh, more secure as, you know, if this same kind of situation were to happen again, it would be difficult for anyone mm -hmm. to, uh, to, to crack it, I guess. But uh, Mark was also saying that, you know, once we do move over to um, the new hashing, we've got, we're going to be asking people to update their passwords to strong passwords, mm -hmm. which we think is a, a bigger issue. Um, really? Okay. And um, they, they just want me to, for basically as long as the chat has been around, uh, people have been screaming bcrypt. So I wonder if uh, bcrypt was on the table as far as security was. Did you hear that? Oh, bcrypt. Right. Okay. They're, they're chat talking in the chat room about bcrypt and uh, it, whether that's on the table. Bcrypt. 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 Yeah, you know anything about that? that? They're afraid that SSH uh, 512. They're afraid is that SSH 512 enough. is not secure enough. Okay. So, yeah, Mark's saying a lot of uh, security experts say that bcrypt isn't that great. Isn't that great? A lot of security experts say that bcrypt isn't that great, he's saying. Okay. And um, uh, I'm sorry, what, uh, what's his name? <laughs> sorry? Uh, Mark, Mark was just saying that we're going to use okay. the. Uh, SHA 512 with a thousand iterations, so he yeah. okay and and salt, which he he feels will will be enough. Okay, Michael, what is your take on that? Can you hear me, Michael? 
Uh, you're asking me about Trade Hill? Yeah, like, well, I'm asking you about, yeah, about Trade Hill. As far as, uh, you know, uh, SALT algorithms for password protection on Trade Hill. Yeah, so uh, right now we're using SHA-1, which we obviously need to reevaluate. Uh, we, th th our hashing is obviously salted, uh, so at least we feel good about that component. Um, you know, I, I would consider, you know, SHA-356 um, or, or something else. Uh, it sounds like the, the MTGOX guys are aware of that as well now. I'm, I'm sorry, what was that last thing again? Sounds like uh, Mark and Adam are aware oh, of yeah. the limitations of SHA-1 and are considering uh, SHA-256 now, or better. Right, okay. All right, and, and uh, there were people asking about, uh, this is again for Mt. Gox, I guess, about open orders. What's going to happen uh, as far as open orders on Mt. Gox when, it, when you bring it back up again? Open, like unfilled orders? Yeah, I guess the order book is what they're referring to. Okay. Um, well, I know, like, again, we've, we put on the, uh, the website here orders uh, between 218,869 and 222,470 will be reverted. So um, let me just check if that's up to when, you know, we shut it mm -hmm. down or where that number is. Okay. <laughs> Everyone's saying cancel them, cancel them, cancel them. The, the open order I guess you. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead. So mm, go ahead. Oh, you're breaking up. Say it again. Yeah, so um, the. Sorry, the, the numbers I just talked about were the, the actual trades that went through, mm -hmm. and the open orders will be flushed. Yeah, they'll be flushed. Okay, that's what I've been saying. And, and like, when you, when you bring it back up, I mean, this is just a naive question because I don't know, but when you bring it back up and there are no orders, do you have to seed it with some orders at first so that there's no, like, wild uh, prices that go through and, and people feel cheated? I know that, like, when you start a new exchange, I think this, that you guys did this uh, on Trade Hill, when you start a, new, a brand new market, a brand new exchange, you have to put the bracket those uh, asks and bids so that there's no you know, wild uh, bids that actually go through when someone's bidding a penny or something. Yeah, well, obviously, when, when you open up an exchange and, and there's nothing going on there, you want a few market makers there to, who feel comfortable uh, losing or gaining money. Mm -hmm. uh, and they would put out bids that they feel are appropriate. Mm -hmm. uh, and so ideally you have some market makers there at the beginning right. to kind of bring some sanity to the situation. Right. And you hear that, Adam? And are you, um, you going to bring, um, I mean, are you going to, to do that when you bring it back up again? Yeah, I couldn't, sorry, I couldn't hear uh, oh, the other comment. Talking about market makers, when you first start, if there are no orders, um, are you going to somehow have market makers, as they call it, there to bracket the asks and the bids so that there's no wildly out of range um, asks or bids that actually go through? Yeah, good question. Uh, two seconds. Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you going to put any market decisions? Chat room, what other questions do you have that we're forgetting um, to ask? The security personnel, um, are, what kind of service stations do they hold? Mm -hmm. um, is it uh, CISP, which is C-I-S-S-P? Okay. We're so, yeah, sorry, to jump back at that last mm -hmm. question. Okay. We, we, are, we are looking at doing that. I don't have any, like, we don't have any details on how, um, exactly how, but, yeah, Mark is, you know, is setting that up. Mm -hmm. Okay. There are questions about um, the security personnel, who are, whoever that may be, there it, assuming there are any <laughs> security yeah. personnel. I mean, that may fall on you and Mark, but... Um, it, the security personnel, what cert sort of certifications do they have, if any? And what was the other thing? Um, like if they're CISP certified, and do they have anybody that could deal with LGBT issues? LGBT issues? Yeah. <laughs> uh, Lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender issues? <laughs> it's, a <little> closer before. <laughs> it's just a week before gay pride. Maybe there's relevancy there, I don't know. But yeah, so do, do you have security personnel and are they certified in anything? Let me, let me just oh, and someone wants to know, will they be flogged? <laughs> will they be flogged? Most likely, if they, yeah. Uh, That's the LGBT issue. Do we have, do we have any uh, security? Anyone else that we talk to, like, uh, for security? 
owned. <laughs> they say you were owned. <laughs> Jimmy <laughs> Dears. <laughs> Extradite them to Turkey, they're saying. At least trout slapped. Okay, so um, so yeah, Mark was our, our main guy had, main guy heading up security uh, up until now. Obviously now with uh, we'd been kind of just resource tied the last little while. I know that we we talked about getting some people in. Now that we've got this kind of break, um, we can find everything them. back online. Um, we are definitely like we're looking for people. <laughs> mm -hmm. You know anyone? Mm -hmm. um, right. But and also uh, we've got a new back end that we're going to be like Mark's been working on for geez I think since mm -hmm. April that now uh, with the break we're probably going to be able to implement in full so mm -hmm. um, that'll add some extra security as well from what I'm told but you so you're looking for people are you are you hiring people only in Tokyo or can they be located elsewhere good question Mark are we looking for people outside of Tokyo for security anywhere is fine Maybe there'll be a, a call. Yeah, to obviously, pref preferably Tokyo. Yeah. Um, we've got we've got this kind of uh, <laughs> bad taste in our mouth from having people offsite, aka yeah. auditors or security people. We yeah. uh, we'd love to have people in house if possible, but right. um, we'll you know take what we can get, I guess. Right. What about um, another question coming if in? Things could. Could have things been done differently, and if they could have, what could have been done differently? Um, yeah, in hindsight, do, what what uh, what are the regrets, or what does Mark regret? What could have been done differently? Or? Okay, uh, I will ask. Okay. <laughs> He's just laughing. So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure. Hindsight is twenty twenty. Yeah, we 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 regret being resource and not being able to finish the, the back end. Um, the security side, we're not, you know, I'm not sure that, uh, that it was such a uh, big fault on our end, um, yeah. definitely, you know, by association, but, you know, this, this site hasn't been compromised, so that, that was a big concern um, of ours was, you know, making sure that that wasn't the case. So, mm -hmm. um, yeah, mostly just not hiring. Actually, we've got an interview waiting for us right now, so I'm not sure. How, how long are we going to be? Well, how, how many minutes are we at? Um, 40, okay, yeah, so I mean, we can pretty much wrap it up. One thing that I have seen uh, uh, frequently in the forums is uh, a question of communication, and I think that, I mean, security is definitely number one, but I would say pretty close to number, number two would be communication. Are, are there any plans to have a, a community liaison, someone who's going to be a, a spokesperson from Mount Gox to really communicate what's going on and why when decisions are made or changes or th things like that, because it's really, uh, it really is uh, bad uh, for customers to not hear a response for a week. I mean, that's, that's the comments I've read in the forum. Yeah, yeah we couldn't, couldn't agree more. Um, and yeah, first, first kind of big one is security. Second one is definitely communication, which we're not going to lie. Um, we've done a really bad job of, and it's not that we haven't known that we've been doing a bad job of it, just that we we haven't had the resources. Like I've, Mark and myself have been working mm -hmm. all, mm -hmm. all that we've been doing um, and, and just trying to find better ways to communicate. So we've got the the new uh, Zen desk up where we, we can post announcements. We would like to get that migrated to the front page, you know, of MTGOX so we can at least post updates. And yeah, so I, going forward, I'll probably be the, the liaison. Um, mm -hmm. And as we get more people, I'll be able to spend more time doing that and you know, addressing the issues of the community and, and our, our traders and users. So so you're Adam Barr, and is are you Adam at MountGox.com? Is that how people yep. can reach you? Okay, so just yep. ADAM at MTGOX.com. Oh, <laughs> oh yeah, I'm, you're gonna help. You're gonna make your life happy. You're gonna get <laughs> lots of email. But uh, but you, I think it's important though to to be able to respond quickly and uh, answer questions, even if it's a one liner back and forth. It really instills uh, faith and confidence in what you're doing. So that's important. Um, so yeah, I've mean, got another interview waiting. I I we can let you go. We can uh, always talk more now that we we have your number <laughs> and. Uh, uh, did you have any? Yeah. Uh, yes. One more. Just one more question. Point, uh, would they consider allowing users to lock their Bitcoin or wallet address on Mount Gox as a security measure? 
to lock their Bitcoin or, or Mount Dwa- or Dwala address in their Nangas account. So like lock somebody it. can't compromise it and change it right away and then send, you know, or cash out to the Mm, do you, I don't. Do you no, I don't understand the question. But the uh, question I'll repeat it is: Is um, would you would they would Mt. Gox consider uh, allowing the users to like log or lock? To lock. Lock. Uh, like link. Pay, payout address. Like oh, let's say if if you to lock a payout address to Dwala or. Yeah, to to Dwala or um, your Bitcoin. Pay, bi- my so Bitcoin if, or something. Yeah, so if you're Mt. Gox and somebody compromises the account, mm-hmm. they immediately. Change the oh, I see what he's saying. So, uh, would it? This might be something to consider for future development. And, and hear this trade hill over there too, <laughs> uh, because what they're saying is uh, that you could. The idea would be to lock your account specifically to one Bitcoin address or one Dwala address, so that funds couldn't be diverted to somewhere else. Although that could be a, a big drawback if you uh, want to change your Bitcoin address. You know, that's something you'd have to really think through, right? I mean, yeah. you know, if you want to, if I wanted, to, if I wanted to go to one Bitcoin address today and another one tomorrow, that's going to be pretty inconvenient. And that, how long is, would the lock be for? That's something you'd have to really think through. But it's an interesting yeah. idea. So. Yeah, but I think the the main thing right now, as far as the you know security around the withdrawals, is getting a, a second password in place, like yeah. a password. I agree. A cell phone, like they were talking about, uh, some sort of a cell phone to SMS verification code that you type back in. Send me a text message to my registered cell phone, and I send an SMS uh, code back or something like that. Yeah, At I talked to about that today. Everything's on the table right now, so you yeah. know, as a community and. Um, I'm sure Trade Hill's listening. Hopefully they can learn from our mistakes. Too. Oh, and one more thing that keeps coming up. Sorry, guys, in the chat room. I uh, so much to talk about. A circuit breaker. They're talking about, is there any way to implement some sort of a circuit breaker when, you know, I mean, I don't know if you guys are watching the market literally 24 hours a day. Um, you know, in Japan, it's, you're actually on the opposite of our calendar, I mean, our clock. So, like, are you literally watching it 24 hours a day, and is there a way to automate a circuit breaker so that if something goes way out of, out of whack, a certain percentage of, you know, the price drops drastically, that it could just literally, like, freeze the system automatically? Is there a way to automate that? Yeah, I mean, right now it's been manual. I think the Mark, Mark kind of caught wind of this at 3 a.m. our time as it was happening. Um, someone rang him and, and let him know what was going on. So, um, you know, in the future, uh, it, I guess it really depends if, if we can have people monitor it uh, 24-7. I mm-hmm. think the office that we're in now wouldn't allow us to have people in in the office 24-7. So um, that's something, you know, we'll have to look at. But um, I think that, yeah, there, there'd be interest in our side of doing something like that. Um, mm-hmm. I, can't imagine, I can't imagine why not. Um, <laughs> People are asking who the name of the auditor. Is that something that you guys can disclose? Who was the auditor? Uh, not right now. No, we'll have to. You know, we're going to be speaking with our lawyers and, and figure out. You know, what what the right thing to do is. So sorry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, everybody wants to know, of course. Um, what what then, another question? Here's an interesting one. Um, they want to know about like the privacy policy. They say, like, how can we uh, trust? If our information was given to an outside source without our consent, um, yeah. you know, um, I, they they at least want to be notified, or you know, want to be option to not consent to that. Yeah. So I don't know if you heard that question, but that's a privacy policy question about, um, you know, whether you can uh, <laughs> not release people's confidential information, like their identity, their email address, to any outside auditor or any other agency without their consent. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, um, definitely, like, we <laughs> we need to work on it in terms of use, and we, we want to lay all that out for people, and definitely, you know, that we're going to look at uh, one one thing, maybe having a separate database for the, the users and emails and, and everything. So, yeah, mm-hmm. definitely we'll, we'll look at that. But, mm-hmm. sorry. Um, yeah, you've got to run. You've got another interview. Yeah. So, well, I, we really appreciate your time, uh, taking the time, especially in the middle of the, all this. So, um, but uh, good luck. I know you've got a lot on your plate, uh, but we'll, we'll talk again and we'll be in touch and we're going to be very communicative with the community. And we, if this is in everybody's best interest that uh, Mt. Gox do well and Bitcoin does well, Trade Hill does well. We need, we need uh, more, better, stronger, more secure. It's in everybody's interest that Bitcoin you know, uh, comes out ahead. 
winning in the end. So thank you so much, Adam. We really appreciate your time. Yeah, thanks for you, for you guys and uh, your patience with me. <laughs> sure, and give our best to, to Mark <laughs> in his native yep. tongue from all of us. And uh, we'll, we'll be chatting again soon. Cheers. All right. Uh, thanks a lot, Adam. That's Adam Barr from Mount Gox and uh, live from Tokyo. And how many minutes are we at, Ed? 50. 50. Okay, so we can wrap it up pretty soon here. But, um, <clears throat> Michael, did you have any other uh, comments or questions or uh, thoughts about, about this whole situation and, and any of the things that Adam said? Uh, yeah, I'll just throw a few ideas out there. Um, first of all, I just want to uh, introduce myself again. Uh, Mike, I'm the lead programmer uh, at Trade Hill. Um, I called in because I feel that perhaps uh, Adam and Jared didn't do justice to uh, some of the questions that were asked earlier. Right. Um, so I'm, I'm happy to take another stab at some of those uh, if, if any of the viewers want to re-ask them. Um, as far as comments on, on the situation, I think people need to understand, um, certainly we, and very likely Mount Gox as well, uh, are resource constrained. You know, we, we all have a certain number of people, we all have a certain amount of money, and we all have a certain amount of time, uh, and, and we need to try to spend that wisely. And it's a balance between security, uh, between features, between customer service, uh, between all these things. Uh, and, and obviously, you know, on, on our side, we're always reassessing where to allocate our resources. It's clear that security uh, has become very important now, uh, probably more important than perhaps all of us may have realized. Uh, and so, at least on our end, we're going to be focusing on that uh, a lot more. Uh, probably hiring uh, a few more experts to come join us. Uh, probably experts with with the proper certifications to uh, assess our system for us. Um, as as Adam and, and Jared pointed out earlier, uh, it's very important to us to be transparent. Uh, and so, you know, while giving out as much information as we can, we're we're going to do that uh, on the forums most likely. Uh, we're also going to try to balance that with, with not giving away enough to, to help people uh, in some way get into our system. Mm -hmm. um, they wanted to know um, if Trade Hill is using SHA-1. SHA-1. Is Trade Hill using SHA-1? You yeah, just speak really, really loud, no. Manny. At the time, it's using uh, SHA-1, SHA-1. They are at, at Trade Hill. Okay. All right. Uh, I'll say a few more words. Um, Jared and, and Adam earlier mentioned um, we're looking at some additional authentication mechanisms, mechanisms for when users sign in. Uh, we're certainly open to many ideas. One idea that, that we're currently starting on is uh, users can opt in to a feature where when they try to log in, we send them an email to the account that they registered with, uh, and it'd be like a one-time use key, uh, and they would need that as well to log in, so not just their password, but this one-time use key. And we could set that up to either be sent to a cell phone or to an email address. Uh, and, and that's in the works. I would say, you know, it's, it's three days out, maybe a week out, but it's it's clear that it's important. I do want to emphasize, though, it would be an opt-in thing. Uh, it would be and, uh, up to the users to make the determination on that. Have okay, they another question. Issuing certificates, have they considered uh, issuing for certificates for users? Uh, so that they would need to authenticate with the certificate in order to log in. I'm not exactly sure what sort of certificate you're referring to in this yeah, case. Yeah. Probably, um, I don't really know either. Like, website certificate? I don't, I don't really understand that question. Um, let's see. Hmm. PGP certificate, oh. Or open ID, or SMIME certificate can be used two-way SSL. Okay, I don't know if you heard any of that, did you? Yeah, I, I got that. Um, yeah, those are obviously uh, more advanced methods of, of verifying identities, and, and we're certainly open to that. We Right now, we don't have any plans for that sort of thing, mm -hmm. uh, but you know, if, if there are things that give us uh, a lot of benefit for relatively low cost, uh, we would be happy to implement them. Right, I mean, and the average user has to be able to use it too, because if I can't use it, it's useless, you know? <laughs> yeah, absolutely, and it's kind of that balance that I was talking about before, right? We need to balance uh, so many things. One is, is user convenience, the other is security. Uh, on our end, we need to balance how we spend our resources. Is it for new features, is it for customer service or security? Right. Yeah, that, and they're saying yeah, that is a barrier for new, new users if, uh, if they have to jump through all these technical 
uh, boundaries. But I mean, simple things. I, I love the idea of the uh, the cell phone SMS kind of thing, where you can just get a text message and type in a code, and that that's just such a simple little thing that uh, gives so much more security. Um, it, it does, but you know, as as with all of these features, when as with all of these features, when you add this, you need to consider the ramifications. Uh, and you know, you may think you're adding some some level of security, but you may be opening yourself up to to something else. Uh, and and so a lot of these things, you you just can't kind of slap them into there. You need to really think about what the implications are. Hmm. Okay. Does, does anybody in the Trade Hill programming team have any background that would sort of indicate that they have experience in writing secure platforms? Does Did you get that? Uh, so. Does anybody in the Trade Hill programming, I'll repeat that. Does anybody in the Trade Hill programming team have back, say that again? A any background, any background that, would that would indicate, indicate um, any, um, you know, talent any ta in, uh, creating special a skills platform. in creating a secure platform. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so uh, none of the guys on our team are, are certified in, in any sort of formal sense. Um, many of them have backgrounds and kind of uh, definitely in computer security uh, and kind of the, the hacking kind of gray areas almost even. Uh, but we recognize that it's important for people uh, that we have actually certified security experts. Uh, and so that's something that we're going to be looking into uh, to bring on board somebody with, with the proper certifications. Two more quick questions and then I think we're, we're out of time. Um, one is, uh, is Trade Hill hiring? Yeah, I, I want to talk about that because that's actually really important. Um, you know, we're, we're not making very much money right now. The, the money and the time that we're putting in is, is our own, really. Uh, and, you know, there's a huge opportunity cost for those of us who are putting effort in because we could be doing other things with our time. Uh, that said, uh, we're most definitely hiring and we're most definitely looking for help. Uh, the biggest areas that we could use help with uh, are one, security, two, scaling up to handle more users. So we're looking for database experts, uh, Apache experts, MySQL experts, uh, security experts, as I mentioned, uh, and also Python coders. Our system is, is written entirely in Python. Okay. And one more quick question. We've got like one minute left uh, in, in 60 seconds. When will Trade Hill be up again and open for the users? Uh, that's a decision we need to take. You know, we, we, we talked about it for a while about whether we wanted to halt our trading. Uh, and we figured it was best for users. We weren't pleased about it because we don't like locking people out of their funds because obviously people can't withdraw money right now. Right. Uh, we would like to open again tonight, uh, but we just need to balance that with making sure that all the users can change their passwords in time so that nobody does actually lose any money. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So, yeah, make sure it's secure. Make sure the passwords are safe before we open it up again. All right. Well, we're going to thank you very much um, again, Michael. Um, and we are out of time, but I'm sure we'll have many more conversations soon. Yeah. Thank you, thank you so much for joining us and uh, and filling in on this such important historic ex historic time. All right, thanks a lot, guys, and we will see you tomorrow. Oh, thanks thanks to for joining us. In the chat room and thanks the to everybody in the chat room and the IRC as well. All right, thanks. See you tomorrow.